Hey friend, Graham here from recordingrevolution.com. Got a cool video for you today. I'm bringing on one of my friends, Chris Lipe, who is a stud of a vocalist and vocal coach. And I stumbled across Chris through a mutual friend when he posted this video of him doing a cover of Soundgarden's The Day I Try to Live. is on one of my favorite records of all time, Super Unknown, back in the 90s. And it's a killer Chris Cornell performance. And he did it in tribute to Chris Cornell when uh, Chris took his life three years ago. And I said, here's a guy who can sing like Chris Cornell, or at least play in that realm where none of us really can play. This guy's got some vocal chops and he's got a great YouTube channel, has some great videos. And uh, I wanted to bring him on my channel. I love vocals. And I'm trying to help you get vocal recordings and vocal mixes to sound good, but we all know that you can't fix a bad vocal performance. And this is a guy that can help you get better vocal performances so that when it comes time to record and mix, it's that much easier. So just enjoy this video. There's a lot of really good stuff in it. You're gonna love it. Give some love to Chris after you finish watching it. And hey, your vocals are gonna get better for it. Take it away, Chris. Hey, Chris Lipe here with my top three things that every singer should do before a vocal recording session. And I'm talking about the days leading up to the session as well as right before that red light goes on. Oftentimes, vocal recording sessions are stressful. The, there's a lot of buildup up to the session or up to the time you have allocated to record your voice. And a lot of singers end up working against themselves when they think they're doing things that help their voice or help their mindset before they go into that big recording session. And in addition to these three to-do things, I'm also going to talk about three no-nos, three things that you really don't want to be doing that do, in fact, work against you instead of help you. And these discussion points may trigger a lot of questions for you as a singer. And if you've got more questions and you want to learn how to improve your voice, discovering what it can really do and be able to sing with lots of confidence and freedom, then I encourage you to check out my YouTube channel linked below. Okay, the first thing that you should do in advance of a recording session is make sure that you are singing in the days leading up to your recording session. So, in other words, don't shut down your voice thinking that you're doing a good thing and resting it so that you can give all when you actually go to record. Your voice is so much more than just an instrument because it lives inside of you. There's so many muscles that all have to work together in a certain way. There's so many mind games and tricks going on all at the same time that we need to make sure that we're setting ourselves up physically and mentally for a great recording session. A lot of times, and this is the first thing not to do, a lot of times singers, when they, you know, if they have to record on Thursday, for example, they will take the few days off prior. Oh, I, I got to rest my voice. I got to be super in the zone for my recording session. Well, if you think of your voice as uh, a set of muscles and you think of singing as a sport, no athlete is going to completely cease activity like what they do in the days immediately prior to their track meet or their basketball game or their whatever it is. There is healthy activity going on, and this may seem somewhat obvious, but we want to make sure that we're using our voice a healthy amount. Now, what is a healthy amount? Although it varies from person to person in your normal vocal usage and budget, it doesn't mean that we want to go sing a three-hour concert in the days leading up. It does mean that we want to have regular conversation, that we want to do our regular singing and warm-up routines, and that we want to be singing all the way through several songs that, are, that we're comfortable with in the days leading up to our recording session. And speaking of warm-ups, 
I think most singers have this all wrong. A lot of singers like to go through scale exercises. If you've ever had vocal lessons, you know, you have those la 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 you have these, you know, sequences and you're pushing your your range and you're practicing going in and out of different resonances. And I think that scale warm-ups, exercise warm-ups are terrible. <laughs> Here's why. I think that they set you up to compete with your own voice. As you warm up with these exercises, because the very nature of them has you, you know, okay, go low, go high. Okay, let's go up to this note. Let's go up to this note. Let's see how high we can get. Oh, I didn't do that very well. We start to tense up when we go higher or we start to focus on the wrong things when we are lower and in our chest resonance. So if we don't want to warm up with scales and traditional exercises, what do we want to do? Well, I recommend using the head voice down approach using a simple single phrase. And this phrase could be anything. The phrase I'm going to use for today is you're not far away. And I'm going to start exclusively in my head voice. You're not far away. I'm going to choose a single comfortable note in my head voice, and I'm going to focus on the resonance of that single note and the placement of that single note. Now, then I'm going to start working around my head voice a little bit and then gradually work my way into my chest voice. Why? Your head voice is a lot easier on your entire set of vocal mechanisms. The vocal cord positioning is easier on your voice. It's easier to get good chord closure and focus on that when we start with our head voice. And it allows us to dial in our support in conjunction with airflow in a way that doesn't feel like we have something to prove. We don't need to be super loud. We likely are not going to start any song that we record in in our head voice. So it's a, it's a nice ramp up into the intensity that we're going to be experiencing in our recording session. You're not far away. You're not far away. You're As I coax my voice down from head voice in a truly relaxed state, I set my chest resonance up for a really nice full sound while sort of beating myself to the insecurity of, oh, I, I can't sing those high notes today. You can. They're in head voice. And you're giving yourself the opportunity to practice good closure high first. This works wonders when you go to build up in your actual songs to those high notes. And as you get more aggressive with your voice and as you start doing more and more things with it in chest resonance and blending those two resonances, you get more and more familiar on that particular day and in the days leading up to how your resonances work together, which is always a moving target. So if we're doing this in the days leading up, 
even for 10, 15 minutes a day, just humming that phrase, doing different things with that phrase. It could be a different phrase every day, but it's, it's the, your phrase for the day or the phrase that you're using as a vehicle to do this. As we do this, we are honing in on that moving target. It's going to feel different every day, and it will help us to deal with those small changes that happen in our vocal tract due to allergies or eating or stress or whatever. It helps us to minimize those things if we're regularly doing this sort of warm-up, and it really helps you to get to know your voice. Speaking of external factors on your voice, we really don't want to be eating or drinking things other than water late at night, really after 7 p.m., because when we do that, we set ourselves up for undigested or partially digested food to creep back up into the very bottom of our vocal tract and influence and kind of sit on our cords. If you've ever woken up with a scratchy voice after having had a lot to drink the night before or having, having had a lot to eat the night before late, this is likely why. And these habits of eating late will stick with you throughout the day and multiple days. So cut off that food. And my third of the top three things we want to do with our voice prior to a killer vocal recording session is this. We want to have regular conversations with our mic and in fact, our signal chain. A lot of singers will practice their songs in the car or walking around outside or in the house and when they go to record, they, they dial in their signal chain and then they, they hit it and they're caught off guard by lots of different things. If you are practicing or learning in one environment and then you go and sing in another environment, or even if you're in your studio, but you haven't really spent time with interacting with your mic, interacting with your signal chain you are not able to fully realize how much impact your signal chain has on your singing. And of course, how you hear yourself is a big part of it too. But dialing in your interaction with the mic, using your short phrase is priceless. And of the three things, it is the biggest thing for me when I go into a recording session. And I do this days before in kind of an intense way, but I'm always interacting with my vocal recording signal chain, even when I'm not actually recording. Get used to how your voice sounds. Get used to the interaction of the compression, the EQ, the help effects that you have that you may or may not use in the actual recording. But how do those inspire and influence your singing? For me, they influence my singing on a very deep level. The mic, the preamp, the compression, the, the EQ, the, the, where it sits in the mix, all these things become part of my instrument. Much like on guitar, when you know, you're not just playing your guitar without an amp and, oh, I got this all down. You're dialing in your tone. You're dialing in the, uh, the amp settings. You're dialing in uh, the, the tone knobs on your guitar and the amount of delay or whatever. We want to do all of that with our voice. So I want to look at my vocal recording signal chain for you and show you how I have regular conversations with my mic uh, in advance of recording sessions. Some of it's kind of silly, but it really does work. Now we're starting with everything bypassed, but I'll start with a completely dry, uh, raw preamp sort of sound, and then I'll add things that help me capture the essence of what I'm trying to do even before I start recording. I'm gonna change it all later, but that's fine. First thing I like to do is dial in a bit of compression. And I'm using a little bit of compression on the preamp that I'm using uh, prior to coming in. I'm using a Manly Core reference channel strip. And there's an opto compressor on there. And so that's some of what you're hearing. And that's part of what I love about my sound with this MA200 mic, but here, I'm going to add, because I'm not adding very much there. I'm going to dial in the compression a little bit more. I'm going to bring down the threshold. Hey, hey, hey. Hey, hey, hey. And I'm going to unbypass it. Hey, hey, hey. Hey, hey. I'm just going to have, I'm just going to talk. Check, check. Check, check. I am going to groan. I'm going to be loud and high. 
and quiet. How does it react? How does it react? Bring the attack down. I know you're not far away. I like to use VCA as a secondary compressor. A lot of people don't. They like to use opto compression. Uh, but I'm already using a little bit of opto compression. I also like using two sets of compression. So compression on the way in and then some here. That really helps me in the box. That really helps me dial in my sound. Bring the, the ratio up a little bit. And really what I'm going for is when I'm singing, I want the mic to come out and meet me halfway, right? I don't want to have to deliver too much because I'm going to introduce all sorts of tension if I feel like I'm having to deliver too much to the mic. That's where I want my compression to be dialed in. I also like to do a little bit of uh, tube saturation emulation. When I sing, when I sing, I like a little bit of saturation, saturation, so that it starts breaking up as I get more intense. As my voice breaks up, the the evidence of the plug-in or the, the preamp seems to break up a little bit. I like it to be subtle, though. When I dial things in, I feel more comfortable. And as far as EQ, I tend to roll off anything below 90 on my voice. But we want to get comfortable with this while we're having our conversation. I strongly recommend not being the kind of vocalist who goes over somewhere else and sings while someone else dials this in. Do it yourself. You owe it to your own voice to know what works best on your voice. Don't let your sound guy or recording engineer do it. Put your mic in front of your desk and, and dial it in. So, uh, and you get to know your voice and what your voice does with certain mics. And the other thing I like to do is add just a little bit more presence. I do not record with a de-esser. I, I add the de-esser afterward. One, two, three. So that's what I do dynamically. Then I like to give myself a little bit of herb. This is very common. One, one. I do a short verb. You can hear that short, short verb. Short, real simple, you know, any verb will do. Uh, simple room reverb. And that's just tweaking it till, you, till you're comfortable with it. But I don't spend too much time on it. Just enough to be in the moment with my voice. And then I like to add a haul, something a little longer. Yeah, and I still have a conversation. A musical conversation, a musical conversation, full of dynamics, full of feeling and thinking. Then the last thing is a little bit of ambient delay. And I will band limit my delay quite a bit. Yeah! Testing it all. Testing quietly. Quiet. Quiet singing. Quiet singing. And then loud singing. And then loud singing. Loud singing. And don't be afraid to make dumb noises. Don't be afraid to do things that are out of your, what you'd actually record. You really want to get not only warmed up and mentally prepared, but really test the limits of your signal chain. Can you go, yeah, on your vocal signal chain and do this and be completely comfortable with your mic? Then you're ready. I hope you've enjoyed my top three things every singer should do before they enter into a recording session. Lots to think about here. Again, if you'd like to take your voice further, I'd love to have you check out my YouTube channel. Tons of vocal tips. 
tons of intense examinations at lots of our favorite singers to help us feel and learn lots more about our voices and become more free and effective with our singing. And a big thank you to Graham for having me guest on the channel. Thank you so much. We'll see you for more. Dude, that was awesome. I hope you enjoyed all that good stuff from Chris. Hey, if you liked it, leave me a comment below in the video and let me know if you wanna see more content on my channel on singing and vocal performance. Also, I've linked to Chris's YouTube channel below so you can go check out all of his amazing videos and show him some love and support. And he also has a free mini course on how to improve your singing, which is awesome. And I've linked to that in the description below. So check it all out, enjoy, stay safe, Stay healthy, have a great rest of your week, and I'll see you on another video real soon.